Okay, chat, the recording's on, and we are going to do an interview session again with Mr. Looter. So, with that, let's start right away with a screen share. The intro can be a little shorter because you guys already met them uh, last, so we can just go in right away. Oh, the first question usual is the intro and then what he thinks about the class, etc. So first of all, the advantageous stuff of War Dancer is War Dancer is one of a character that is easily accessible, that can be, you know, very good at all sorts of gameplays. The class can be as simple as first intent. And if you really don't like simple, a simple mechanic, you can actually go to esoteric. But overall, she's very tanky and she has options to get a lot of maneuvers. And she also has options to do a lot of damage with removing those maneuver skills as well. So therefore, how he said it is it feels like it's a very versatile character. Hence, I think that's why there's a lot of builds too, right? 배마를 추천하지 않는 이유 중에 하나는 캐릭이 살짝 단순한 느낌이 있어서 이게 약간 재미없다고 느끼시는 분들도 있을 거예요. 캐릭터가 mm, 약간 mm. The second question was, you know, what do you, any disadvantage stuff? This class technically if you play something like first intent, you basically press a four or five skills since she has a set cycle for everything. You're kind of doing it like a robot. That may feel boring for some people. But in opposite, that might feel fun for some other people because you don't have to worry too much about like what you're supposed to do in, in, a, in a specific situation, etc. This is the stuff I do want it to address for uh, all the people that are interested in War Dancer or people who are playing War Dancer is not going to change from this point regardless of what kind of build you do. The main fundamental stuff that she is focused on is the cycle DPS and then you will have a point in time where you're just gonna walk around and just auto attacking, right? And by that time, you would be dodging patterns or doing mechanics. So it's a both advantageous and disadvantageous thing that we definitely wanted to address, and I wanted to, I definitely wanted to ask him. So what we're going to do in this interview is we're going to review his uh, word answer build. He can talk about his build, his thought process for it, and then we can probably uh, adjust the interview content accordingly after that. 제가 사용하는 빌드는 지금 5이 3레벨을 주고 아드 1레벨을 사용하면서 5이 스킬 4개를 사용하는 극특 3열 배마거든요. The very first build that he wants to talk about right now, high spec crit for esoteric build that with level 1 adrenaline. Keeping up level 1 uh, adrenaline stack is pretty tough. Adrenaline 3 is really nice, but this particular four spender build when you're in a real fight it's really, really tough to keep that adrenaline stack up. Therefore, it's at level one. And if you happen to have a 9-7 stone with the ancient accessories, it can be level two. Just having that adrenaline level one just gives you that 5% additional crit if possible in a live battle. Doesn't matter which any build that you bring for any war dancer, this is the highest DPS build, highest ceiling build. The problem is this build itself is very hard to manage. It's very slow. There's a lot of shackles to it. And the additional question that uh, I asked for was hey you know like some of the na guys are in a different standpoint for example like can't really go over 1800 or or uh there's a 5-3 what's an example for a 5-3 how he talks about is I, which i do agree as well is when we are in like a relic stage right or not investing too much money into it i i believe that those guys are still in a learning phase of learning the raid for example Learning the raid is the number one most important thing because how do you do DPS if you don't know the raid period? So when you guys go to Brawl Hard, you guys are still in the learning phase, like dodging patterns, uh, doing the cycles, etc. So a safer approach would be taking like a hallucination and then removing Ambush Master and taking in Adrenaline. And then you can also take something like uh, a Raid Captain on top of that. But we're going to talk about this more in detail. But the initial build that he uses that he wants to share was the the highest ceiling build. 이 빌드를 하기 위해서는 조건이 하나가 필요해요. 이 조건이 안 맞춰져 있으면 이 빌드를 사용하지 않는 게 훨씬 세거든요. 음. Mm -mm. 
Another point that he wanted to point out for this highest uh, ceiling War Dancer build is there's a re there's a requirement. The three Umar families and the Lazenith card. That's a back attack card, right? Uh, if you don't have this particular card set, it will do weaker damage than the, the regular Hallucination build because using the Hallucination build, you're not forced to do back attack. Uh, but if you have this card set itself, you will be doing the back attack and doing the boost, that, getting that boost of damage to a point that it just overpowers the, the freedom of having it uh, running around as a Hitmaster class. In this case, 그러니까 불편함이 증가할수록 세진다고 했잖아요. 음, 음. 대마의 모든 불편한 점을 이 캐릭터는 다 달고 있어요. <웃음> This particular build that has all the damage, it has all the shackles that a war dancer has. In this game, if your character has essentially like shackles, right? Shackles and handicaps or like for example being slow, you have to activate different skills to do more damage. Those we call that shackles, right? The more you have, you're supposed to do more damage. That's just, this is how uh, this, this particular game is built. If you're fast, if you're more comfortable, you're supposed to do lower damage because it's easier for you to actually land skills or maneuver around the fight uh, to do have, have a good DPS uptime. This build technically took all the handicaps, all the shackles, all the weights because it's super slow due to high spec. Space sparse really bad. Remove all the uh, moving skills and all these esoteric skills. I, I believe for sure it has a very like a high animation, and you're doing back attack at the same time. Therefore, this particular build is definitely not recommended for players who are not used to the raid. Like being not used to the raid is not you guys clearing it maybe like five, ten times. It's like when you guys are progging some raids or progging like a guardian raid, etc. You guys feel like, oh, this guy moves too much, or that guy moves too much. I can never hit his back, whatever. Like, what in his standpoint, any raid, if you know where he's gonna dash, you pre position yourself and you do DPS on the back. Like, you can actually do that if you're so used to the raid. Uh, and then, you know, we say that skill difference or like a pilot difference. So, in his point of view, this particular build has all the, all the penalties, all the movement, the shackles, all these things together. But still enough to actually do full cycles or, or do proper damage while playing it. And as if for this particular build, uh, any class, and which, uh, the funny part is uh, the Slayer, except Slayer, if it's the like same build, if it's like a same spec, as in like the you know, same gems, same cards, you know, like same about the combat stats, this particular build cannot lose to any class in terms of DPS. Uh, and, but the thing is, you just need to be that much better. Yeah, that's actually... 그 특치 사멸별마 중에서도 이 사람들이 많이 사용하는 빌드는 이, 이 나성경이라는 스킬을 빼고 여기다 편의성을 위해서 내면각을 사용하시는 분들이 많거든요. 음. So going over the skills a little bit, you notice you have four spender here, uh, and then we have esoteric skill spiral impact switched into lightning kick. Like people who really hate the spiral impact skill, they took it down and then they move it to lightning kick for more maneuver. If you think about it, as he said at the very beginning, is what happens if you get comfort? What happens if you get comfort chat? You lose DPS. So if you actually switch Spiral Impact to Lightning Kick, it's an example of losing about 15% of DPS, like the uh, average DPS, because you're removing one skill off. If you decide to make it even tougher, even add more weights and more shackles in it, you would uh, you would just add in that spiral impact and then increase that potential DPS that you would need to do. 혹시 그러면은 그 네. 스킬부터 약간 조, 조금씩 얘기를 해봐도 될까요? 네, 네. So we're 네. gonna talk about uh, the skills in detail and then apparently this particular build has three different cycles and it is different dependent on three different situation. 이 배마의 가장 핵심 스킬은 이 바람의 속삭임이거든요. The reason why he's going over Wind's Whisper first is because this is the most important skill that a war dancer has. For example, as you can notice at the ready attack, it gives you 49.7% uh, attack increase for 6 seconds. So the goal is to squeeze in as many DPS skills within that 6 seconds. And based on how well you do that, the more DPS you do. So everything revolves around Wind Whisper. Wind Whisper. 배마의 시너지의 꽃이죠. 
for the next skill, we have Row of Courage, right? This is your crit synergy skill. You use War of Courage first and then use uh, the Wind's Whisper because the cooldown difference uh, as Wind Whisper is shorter. For those of you who are a newbie, like a newbie war dancer that's destiny, what's important here is you always you always combine these two skills together, Row of Courage and Wind's Whisper. And you usually use War of Courage first and then Wind's Whisper after. If you understand this point, you understand half of War Dancer already. Uh, this is how that's why that's how much important these two skills are. 오이베마에서는 폭살진이 가장 중요한데 베마 자체로 놓고 보면 이 내공 연소가 가장 중요하다고 생각하, 생각을 하거든요. The third most important skill, so we're going up by importance, which is really nice, is <clears throat> energy combustion. Most of you guys used it already. Uh, one thing he wanted to point out was this is the main skill to use to gather the orbs for esoteric war dancer. But if you're playing something like first intent, uh, you have the combustible armor that increases defense. And this thing particularly, uh, as long as it's activated, you have that defense. So that's why first intent war dancers are so tanky because they always have that energy combustion up and running. And then you have that additional defense up. And as of the esoteric version, you take the esoteric extortion to keep gathering the, uh, the bubbles. I think this is why War Dancer is a very complicated class. Uh, based on your build, Energy Combustion can be your main DPS skill or it could be a utility skill. You notice him, he has as level 7 only uh, to give more skill points to his major DPS skills. But if you're playing something like Hallucination version of the Esoteric or if you're playing First and 10, you would take Intense Battle and Last Whisper, you know, the one that explodes, right? The explosion does the big damage and if you just keep landing all the ticks, all the DOTs within the boss, it does just enough uh, DPS as the main uh, DPS skills you have as a war dancer. Therefore, if you're playing first and ten or any other skills, you will take different tripods to take this particular skill as a main DPS. Or if you're happening to play uh, the highest ceiling build, which it which it uh, relies more on the back attack and the esoteric skills itself, you convert that energy combustion into utility. To have uh, the orb generation instead. 오이 베마에서 가장 큰딜 지분을 차지하는 이 오이 폭세진이라는 스킬이거든요. Esoteric blast formation. This is the highest DPS skill that a uh, war dancer has to offer. 폭세진 같은 경우 이 약간 큰 몬스터한테는 그냥 붙어서 쓰시면 되는데. Is if you're attacking it with a big monster, all the ticks land. But if you play against like a smaller monster, like smaller bosses, like humanoid bosses. It's hard to land them, so instead of using a space bar back, you would just walk a little bit behind, and then you would use the blast formation to land the full tick. So that's again, we we're, we're talking about shackles, right? So that's another shackle to add that uh, that brings discomfort, but it just it delivers more damage. 풍신초래라는 스킬인데 대마 유저들이 굉장히 싫어하는 스킬이에요. <laughs> 이게 모션도 안 좋을 뿐더러 후딜까지 있고. Most War Dancer players don't like this skill, which is the called the Wind God. Uh, you, sometimes you guys hear Zeals complain about this skill as well. And you have two of them. You have Raging Storm and Summon Storm. The problem about Raging Storm is when you use it, you're moving so slow. If the boss moves just a little bit, the ticks kind of like go down, right? And if you use a Summon Storm, when you are spinning around, you can't do anything. You can't like space bar away or anything like that. So you're stuck there. So imagine you're using this skill and then the boss is doing a pattern. You just, you just have to take the hit. Every war dancers hate this skill. But the thing is, it does the second most damage on the esoteric tree. If you're an esoteric, as you know, the more bubbles you have, the more damage you, uh, the more damage you do when you're using it. You would use the blast formation and call it the wind god when you have four bubbles ready to go. Most of the war dancer cycle, for at least for esoteric, is based on, okay, am I going to use these two skills when the bubbers are full. So you have to rotate it accordingly. And this has to do with how much spec you have, how much wealth runes you have, like all these things together combined uh, to make sure that you have four bubbles before using these two skills. Because if you don't, you're, you're missing a lot on the DPS opportunities. For the third skill, Esoteric Skill Rising Fire Dragon. So this particular skill, one point that he wanted to uh, say was it has tenacity with using the DPS skills that he uses. For the tripods that he used for focus hit and eye of the tempest, 
you would use it as a DPS skill, and also at the same time, you use it as a, a super armor skill so that you don't get, you know, knocked off when you're fighting like Broshaz or something like that. So it is a choice of a skill that you can have that can be used as a sub, sub DPS skill. So it's really good that can also be activated for utility purposes. So, uh, last skill, this is more of a the skill that he uses, uh, Looter uses, a spec crit for Spender. It's esoteric skill, Spiral Impact, right? Uh, for Spiral Impact, you have weak point detection and destruction below. In the second row, these are all preference-based. So some people take Swift Fingers, some people take Lucky Bubble, and some people take luck, uh, Ready Attack. Uh, he uses the Ready Attack version for that. Uh, but for some people who wants a faster animation, they tend to take Swift Fingers. Uh, as he show you there, it's kind of used in as a filler, like a filler DPS skill, where how much, you know, where you're doing your cycle, you can fit in the skill if you can, or if you can't fit in the skill, that's okay too. Actual raid standpoint, he said it gets about 40 million-ish per tick, but it's like a 7 second cooldown. So it's actually a really good skill. And then you can rotate this Spiral Impact twice uh, before your Wind Whisper comes back. So it is it is a filler skill that you use uh, to make sure that you're just getting that maximum uh, DPS potential coming out. This is the very important thing that we got Looter f for uh, talking about War Dancer chat because he grew War Dancer because of the damage potential alone. As for the feedback of what most people uh, would think about War Dancer is, you know, they have an unrealistic cycle. They're very clunky. They're slow. It's luck based. How are we supposed to attack everything at the back? All that stuff, right? He felt the same way as well. But after adjusting cycles, after adjusting a little bit more and getting more experience in the raid, uh, it became more consistent, and that yields him getting Cruel Fighter a lot more. In that particular case, uh, that has to do with the cycle, and he he says in advance that if some people, like some people may disagree within the cycle, because in the beginning, we have said that you're supposed to use Row of Courage and Wind's Whisper together. But instead, what he usually, what he does is he adjusts that cycle to his liking, uh, to fit in more by using Wind's Whisper and then do the DPS and doing Row of Courage after, and then ho and then landing just the uh, the Wind's Call to finish that full tick for that Wind's Whisper, and then rotate the other three skills accordingly so that you can actually land it. You can focus on landing the skill more than trying to squeeze in all the DPS within six seconds. Because then again, it doesn't matter if you can squeeze all that. Uh, skills within six seconds because if you don't land it, it's zero. So he kind of balances it out so that we have higher accuracy, which yields into higher DPS versus people who can't land the skill. In this point, the most this is like actually the most important point in the interview series. You know, the build stuff you guys can find out builds everywhere, right? The builds is easy to explain, but this kind of sick a skill cycles and actual play style that yields you a better DPS is more important on these interview series these days. And then we're going to explain that uh, step by step for you guys uh, according and then afterwards like, you know, with different builds as well. This is what makes the Cruel Fighter things happen. This is what makes higher DPS happen because you have to land it and you have to build the cycles accordingly. If you have a lot of shackles, you have to adjust it accordingly. And again, you have to master the rate as well. We, we skipped a little bit on the sky shattering blow. You know, you use this as a counter skill, and it's a very good counter skill for those of you who used it, right? The first hit and the second hit are both counters. And as you notice, he has the wealth rune there as well. So this is the swift footwork and ready attack and abundant resource. So abundant resource gives you a bunch of orb, uh, orbs to use it as a resource skill. And at the same time, he has ready attack tripod to give you additional... Uh, attack power within when you land the second hit of the skill. So before that, he wanted to mention the reason why we were mentioning Scattershot a little later was because he has three uh, ready attack tripods. For example, he has it on Wind Whisper, he has it on Sky Shattering Blow, and he has it on Spiral Impact. Uh, so this is the first point of why uh, his rotation is uh, built that way because Spiral Impact has ready attack. Sky Shining Bull has ready attack, so he can actually mix in those ready attack buffs 
between the skills so that you don't have to rely everything on Wind's Whisper. Yeah, 그리고 이 나성경 스킬 설명을 드릴 때, 음. 이 나성경이 카운터도 가능하거든. Oh, mm, that's actually really nice because he wanted. He also wanted to mention that Spiral Impact is is indeed a counter skill as well. So if you actually have both of these skills on your kit, uh, what happens is you can counter yourself on Gate One for Bro, and then you can counter all three of them for Bro Shaza Hard on Gate Five. Because when you guys play Bro Shaza Hard, uh, Gate Five, you only have one counters top and bottom, right? In Hard Mode, there's three each, so you, one person need to counter all three. Uh, and usually the classes that have two counters or fast counter tend to take that position. 네, 그 제가 이 공준 세 개를 사용하는 이유가 음. 이잘 보시면 공격 준비의 특허들 간의 차이가 있어요. The reason why he uses three ready attack tripod, as you notice there. First one, obviously the biggest one is Wind's Whisper, and then you have the lowest one, which is the Sky Shattering Blow, and then you have the second highest one, which is which is the spiral impact. The spiral impact gives you 44.4%. It's not that big a, big much of a difference compared to Wind's Whisper. So that's why his cycle is Wind's Whisper and then you ro uh, roll Curse and you land two of the main skills, which is the Blast Formation and Wind Call. And then he uses Sky Shattering Blow to give reset the buff, but it's 27%, to give additional damage to spiral impact. But again, spiral impact was a filler DPS skill, right? So it's not as important therefore it gives you the lowest attack power uh to just use spiral impact for and then when you use spiral impact and land spiral impact your rising fire dragon gets that 44.4 percent attack power increase therefore your third dps skill that's about in the middle ish area gets gets a really efficient buff beforehand to land that dps so so the uh the thought process between these cycles were applied there the attack buff is applied accordingly and equally distributed so that you have uh you don't have like a smudge kind of situation. 네, 그리고 이, 이 사이클의 경우 단점이 하나가 있는데요. 제가 폭세진에 가장 그 대마에 있어서 가장 센 스킬이라고 했잖아요. 근데 여기에 용포가 안 묻어요. So additionally, this particular cycle has a, a weakness to it, which is if you use the wind's whisper and then blast formation right away, you don't have row of courage, right, Chas? So you don't have the crit synergy applied. Therefore, it has a uh, it has a chance to not crit as much the blast formation. But even with that weakness applied, uh, since you are using both of your major DPS skills within Wind Whisper, and since the ready attack tripods for both Sky Shattering Blow and the Spiral Impact is equalized a little bit, in terms of realistic DPS. So when you do that, the second cycle, you make it a little bit more balanced to make it a higher accuracy. Uh, therefore, you kind of make back. You kind of make back the, the stuff that you lost if you happen to not crit. And if you crit, you, you actually gain more. Because if you're lucky and then you crit, you know, you're, just, you're just in a good shape. But if it doesn't crit, you still have additional skills to make up for that as well.